Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about partnership dissolution with liquidation. So what is liquidation? It is basically the winding up of the business, usually by selling the assets, paying the liabilities, and distributing the remaining cash to partners. A business which is in the process of converting its assets into cash and making settlements with creditors is said to be in liquidation. A partnership is liquidated when its business operations are completely terminated or ended. It may be caused by different factors such as when the purpose of the partnership has already been accomplished, the term or period covered by the contract has already terminated, the firm becomes bankrupt, or when the partners mutually agree to close the business. So, when a partnership is liquidating, its assets are sold, the partnership creditors are paid, and the remaining assets are distributed to the partners as a return of their investments. There are two types of liquidation, namely lump sum liquidation and installment liquidation, which is also sometimes referred to as piecemeal. So lump sum liquidation is a method whereby all assets are converted into cash, all liabilities are paid, and all profits or losses are charged to the partner's capital accounts, followed, followed by a single liquidating distribution to the partners. Installment liquidation, on the other hand, involves the selling of some assets, paying the liabilities of the partnership, dividing the available cash to the partners, selling additional assets, and making further payments to the partners. This process continues until all the assets have been sold and all cash has been distributed to the creditors and to the partners. So here are a few terms that you need to be familiar with when it comes to liquidation. So first is dissolution, which is the termination of the life of the partnership. And as we have discussed before, dissolution can occur either with or without liquidation. Next is liquidation, which is the process of winding up the business, which normally consists of conversion of assets into cash, the payment of liabilities, and the distribution of remaining assets among partners. Next, we have realization, which is the process of converting non-cash assets into cash, or simply put, it's basically selling your non-cash assets. And then we have the gain on realization and loss on realization, which is related to realization. So gain is basically the excess of the selling price over the carrying amount of the non-cash assets, which you sell through realization. Loss, on the other hand, would be the excess of the carrying amount of, over the selling price of the non-cash assets. And then we have capital deficiency, which is the excess of a partner's share on losses over his capital balance, resulting to a debit balance in the capital account. So simply put, it's basically when a partner's share in the loss on realization is greater than his or her capital balance. So take, for example, partner A, whose capital balance is only 50000 and whose share on the loss on realization would be 60,000. So if this is the case, partner A would have a capital deficiency of 10,000 pesos. And then we have deficient partner, who is a partner with a debit balance in his capital account, or simply put, a partner who has a capital deficiency. Then we have the right of offset, which is the legal right to apply a part or all of the amount owing to a partner on a loan balance against a deficiency in his capital account resulting from losses in the process of liquidation. So take our example earlier, partner A has a capital deficiency of 10,000. So if he has a, um, if he has a loan balance of 20,000, he has the right to 
um, offset this loan balance against his, cap against his capital deficiency. So this means that partner A would now have no capital deficiency, but his loan balance would be decreased by 10,000 pesos. Next, we have partner's interest, which is basically the sum of a partner's capital, loan balance, and advances to the partnership. And then we also have the solvent partner, who is a partner whose personal assets exceed his personal liabilities. Insolvent partner is basically the opposite of the solvent partner. So an, an insolvent partner is one whose personal assets are less than his personal liabilities. And then last we have the statement of liquidation, which is an accounting statement summarizing the winding up of the business affairs of the partnership. So this video would only focus on the lump sum liquidation. And here are the procedures that we need to remember. So first is you need to finish the accounting cycle by adjusting and closing the books and then carrying the net income or loss into the partner's capital accounts. And then we have to sell the non-cash assets and then distribute any gain or loss on realization among the partners using the profit and loss ratio. So we've already discussed the definitions of the gain and loss on realization earlier. If a partner's capital balance results in a deficiency after the distribution of loss on realization, three scenarios may occur. So first is when he or she has an, a loan balance to the partnership. So if this is the case, you need to apply the right of offset and apply the loan balance against the debit balance. And then if a partner still has a deficiency after doing so, or he didn't have a loan balance in the first place, he or she can either be solvent or insolvent. So if the partner is solvent, he just needs to make an additional investment to remove his deficiency. And if he is insolvent, his deficiency will be absorbed by the other partners. Remember that cash is to be distributed in the following priority of payments. So first is always to the partnership's outside creditors before paying the loan to partners. And finally, you make the payments to the partners using their capital balances. Remember that the final distribution of cash to partners is made based on the partner's capital balances and not based on the profit and loss ratio. And when cash is not sufficient to pay creditors, the solvent general partners shall contribute the difference using their loss ratio. So here is a sample problem to understand the process of liquidation. Assuming that the company has already adjusted their books and closed all the accounts, and we have these balances here. A, B, and C share profits and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1, and assume that assets were sold for 170,000 pesos. So the first thing you need to do is copy all the account balances given and write them as headings here. So that's cash, other assets, accounts payable, loan, loan, A capital, B capital, and C capital. And then we need to list down all the balances before realization, which is the amount stated here. So I've copied it beforehand. And then now we need to record the sale of assets. So again, the non-cash assets were 340,000 were sold for 170,000. So it means that there was an increase in cash and a decrease in your other assets. So that's positive 170,000 for your cash column and the negative 340,000 for your other assets column. So your other assets now has a zero balance. So if you think about it, there is a loss on realization because you only sold your other assets for half of its price. So your loss on realization actually amounts only to 170,000. Again, this should be divided among partners using their 
profit and loss ratio of 2 is to 2 is to 1. So A would have a share of 2 over 5 of 170,000, which is 68,000. B would have the same amount of share. And C would have a share of 1 fifth of 170,000 or 34,000. And then we compute for the balances afterwards. And then we have this row. So now we have to pay the liabilities of 112,000. So that means we reduce your accounts payable by 112,000. And since we used cash to pay for these, you have to reduce your cash balance by 112,000 as well. So now we compute for the balances again. And we have another row for it. And then we see that B has a capital deficiency of 8,000 pesos. So the first thing you need to check is if he has a loan balance. So yes, B has a loan of 5,000 here. So what we need to do is apply the right of offset. So we reduce the loan balance by 5,000 and reduce the deficiency by 5,000 as well. So again, we compute for the balances and we see that B still has a deficiency of 3,000 pesos. Assuming that B is already insolvent, he can no longer provide additional investments, so his loss should be absorbed by A and C according to their profit and loss distribution. So if this is the case, A would have 2 and C would have one part of 3,000. So, so 2 thirds of 3,000 is 2,000. And then one third of 3,000 is 1,000. And then C would um, no longer have any capital deficiency. So we recompute the balances. And then the last thing we need to do is to pay the partners. So after applying the right of offset, and we see that B still has a capital deficiency. Assuming that B is a solvent partner and applying the right of offset results to a capital deficiency, B would have to provide an additional investment to remove his capital deficiency. So the difference would lie in step number four. So instead of absorption of loss, we have an additional investment. So the effect would be an increase in your cash and then the removal of the deficiency of B. And then we recompute the balances. So um, your cash balance would now be 81,000 and then um, the rest would follow. So the last thing we need to do is to pay the partners. So there you go. To record the entries, we have here. So first is to record the gain on realization. So what you need to do is to debit your gain on realization and credit um, the capital balances of the partners. So assuming that there is a loss in realization, we simply debit the capital balances of the partners and credit the loss on realization. The entry to pay the liabilities is basically to debit the account balances of your liabilities and credit cash. If there is an offset of the deficiency against the loan, it's recorded by debiting the partner's loan and crediting the partner's capital. The payment of the partner's loan is recorded by debiting his loan and crediting cash. So, loss absorption of um, a partner's deficiency is recorded by debiting the absorber's capital balances. So here we have A and C, and then crediting the deficient partner's capital balance. So last is the payment of the capital balances of the partners. So you debit their capital balances and then credit cash. So that's all for today and I hope you learned something.